Right now at 5, we are keeping a close eye on Storm Tracker 6 live radar for the threat of severe weather. Our region remains under a risk of scattered storms. Thursday night, I'm Walter Perez. Shari's off. Rick will be along in just a few moments. And I'm Christy Aletto. The big story on Action News is the severe thunderstorm warning that's in effect right now. Let's get right to meteorologist Brittany Boyer in for Cecily tonight with the latest. Brittany. We're following breaking news. It has been a violent afternoon in Philadelphia. Nine people have been shot across the city since 1.30 this afternoon. Let's go right to Action News reporter Dan Cuellar, live in Brewery Town, where a hail of bullets rang out just after 2 o'clock, leaving two men seriously injured. Dan. Earlier today, investigators in Montgomery County released chilling new details about the murder of a pregnant woman. The suspect charged in her killing was arraigned today. Action News reporter Katie Castro joins us live from the Exxon station in King of Prussia, where the murder took place. Katie. Back to you. Such a tragic story. All right, thank you, Katie. Well, minutes ago, the jury was adjourned in the bribery trial of Philadelphia City Councilman Kenyatta Johnson and his wife, Dawn Chavu. The jury began deliberating yesterday morning. Federal prosecutors allege that Johnson and his wife were offered $66,000 in bribes disguised as consulting work for Chavu. Both Johnson and Chavu have maintained their innocence. The jury will return for deliberations on Monday morning. Well, the new plan calls for the largest increase in affordable housing in Pennsylvania history. State Senator Vincent Hughes announced the $2.27 billion housing investment plan in Philadelphia's Mantua section today. All right, time for a check of the Action News traffic reports. Mobile 6 is on 295 North, headed toward Mount Laurel. Well, it's a heavy one out there, and then the rain's coming. It's not going to get any yeah, better. Yeah, sounds like fun. Yeah. All right, thank you, Jessica. Coming up, we're taking you to the Jersey Shore, where businesses are getting ready for summer. Alicia. Here at Hershey. It's Port. always Thank about you. the food, Rick. Ooh, always wait. about the food. <laughs> yeah, that all looks so good. All right, thanks, Rick. <laughs> the gorgeous oh weather. So cool. Yeah, yeah, and those kids have the moves behind <laughs> Yeah, they do. <laughs> All right, thank you, Alicia. Well, Peloton is bumping up its monthly subscription fee. The price is going up five bucks. Peloton says this is the first time it has raised the price of a subscription. And while the monthly fee will be higher, there is good news to pass along for anyone looking to buy a bike or a treadmill. Peloton is slashing the prices of those products. In fact, the Bike Plus is now $500 cheaper. All right, much more to come in Action News at 5. A check of the AccuWeather forecast. That's right, looking live outside, Sky 6. Woo! Wow. Should be showing you Hello. the Ben Franklin Bridge. <laughs> Instead, we see an ominous curtain of clouds coming our way. Meteorologist Brittany Boyer has the exclusive AccuWeather 5 Day When Action News comes right back. It's more like London Bridge. Yep. <laughs> Right, at least temporarily. Mm -hmm. All right, Brittany, thank you. Ready to hire? Well, coming up, how Jersey Shore businesses are preparing for the summer season. We have more when Action News comes right back. Here's what's happening in Action News at 5.30. We're learning new details about a deadly crash during the morning rush. A car involved was split in half. Also, behaving badly. A Phillies fan reacts when a Mets fan's taunting was more than he could take during a game at Citizens Bank Park. And another edition of Rick's Road Trip. This time, he's highlighting the sweet family adventures to be had at Hershey Park. Rick. All right, much more to come in Action News. All-star Joel Embiid talks about round one in the NBA playoffs. Alicia. Yeah. So I, tried this, fun. Yeah. I tried this last September. It was so oh, fabulous. <laughs> yes. Okay, sign me up. Yes. I'm ready to go on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Alicia. Little thanks. umbrella drink, bam. Can't go wrong. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Alicia. All right. Time for a check on sports. We begin with the Sixers. They had another day to fine-tune their game plan for game one versus the Raptors. Sixers looking like a loose bunch, ready for the challenge Toronto presents. A team, by the way, that beat them three out of four during the regular season. Joel Embiid contending with injuries during playoffs in the past. So, how's the big man feeling now? I wouldn't say fully, but, uh, you know, yeah, but I'm right there. Uh, it feels good. Game one, 76ers, Raptors, 6 p.m. right there on ESPN. Moving on to baseball, after a 3-3 homestand to open the season, the Phillies hit the road for Miami. Kyle Gibson will get the start in game one of a four-game series in South Florida. Gibson is coming off a seven-inning, two-hit, ten-strikeout performance versus the A's on Saturday. Meanwhile, it's a Phillies fan that everyone's talking about. During the ninth inning of Tuesday's game, people thought a Mets fan went a little too far with the heckling. He was seen recording Phillies fans pointing at them and laughing at them. Obviously annoyed by the taunting, a Phillies fan grabbed his phone and chucked it onto the field. Stadium security quickly escorted that fan from the stadium. I think it's fair to say that Phillies fans think it was completely appropriate. Our final day of this spring break road trip ends up. We head back to the shore. 
We're going to be live in Ocean City and have a party on the beach. It's going to be a party. good Friday. You see well, what I did there? As you, as you drive by the station on the way there, throw the chocolate out the window. <laughs> we'll send Sours out to get it. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay, well, Kraft wants to know if the nose really knows. Get it? The company is pumping the smell of cream cheese into the dairy section at select grocery stores in <laughs> Chicago and New Jersey. It's stunning if the aroma will lead to an increase in sales of Philadelphia cream cheese. Aroma marketing could become a new marketing tool in grocery stores in the future. Just in case you didn't already feel like a lab rat, <laughs> here we go. All right, well, the Action News team is standing by with these stories and more next at 6 o'clock. New Jersey sets the date for when dispensaries can start selling recreational marijuana. We'll also meet the pioneering local runner set to be honored at the Boston Marathon on Monday. Well, now for meteorologist Brittany Boyer, Alicia Vitarelli, Rick Williams, and Walter Perez, and the entire Action News team, I'm Chris Leto. Have a good night. Good night. Action News reporter Walter Perez is live outside that Best Western tonight. Water lots to cover here, including some effective police work by the Philadelphia PD. No doubt, Jim. Really good cooperation between the NYPD and Philadelphia police. But in the end, it was the suspect's destructive behavior that helped investigators make the arrest. Police and firefighters responded to reports of a fire inside the Best Western on Vine Street yesterday evening. Rigoberto Pelosa is a member of the cleanup crew. He says, quote, it seems toilet paper was used to start the fire, which lit a curtain nearby. Thank God the damage wasn't that bad. Investigators quickly determined the suspect was 60-year-old Gary Cabana, the same man wanted for stabbing two employees at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City this past weekend. They made some phone calls, put two and two together, and did what they were supposed to do. So it, it, it was a really good example of some strong police work. Then, several hours later, right around 1.30 this morning, police found Cabana sleeping on a bench at the Greyhound Terminal at 10th and Filbert. We spoke with people who live near the Best Western who say... They didn't know until today that the museum stabbing in New York and the hotel room fire in Philadelphia were linked. And it's kind of insane from the guy who came from New York and then just being so close to me. And it's like mind blowing. Now Cabana will soon be extradited to New York where he will face a string of charges, including assault two for these incidents, assault three for a previous incident in Manhattan where he punched a previous employee and an aggravated harassment where he's sending threats via email. Now, Cabana is being processed at Central Detectives. It at least appears he didn't hurt anybody here in Philadelphia. Also, we're told the two people stabbed in New York are expected to be okay. Reporting live from Spring Garden, Walter Perez, Channel 6 Action News. Jim? Thank you, Walter. Gunfire erupted in a quiet Montgomery County community early this morning. Police say a man opened fire on them in the parking lot of a condominium complex in Mount Clair. This around 3 a.m. Officers returned fire, wounding that man. Action News reporter now Walter Perez, live for us in Mount Clair with more on what led up to the violence this morning. Walter. That's right, Shari. It was quite the scene out here earlier this morning. We'll give you a live look right here at the suspect's pickup truck now smashed and riddled with bullets. Authorities say they entered the scene with caution after being told the suspect was heavily armed and acting erratically. It was members of the suspect's family who first called 911 right around 3 o'clock this morning saying their loved one was experiencing some kind of mental health emergency. Police quickly arrived at the Meadows condominium complex, but the suspect had already left his condo. In fact, investigators started positioning officers inside other condos as lookouts after the family said he was heavily armed. Joyce Hadsell says that included an officer setting up inside her home. There was a the guy was had the gun resting on the windowsill. From your room? From my room. A short time later, the suspect was located and gunfire was exchanged. It was gunshots after the other, after the other, and we at least thought that there was one person, but then we heard it coming from the other direction, too. The gunman eventually crashed his truck and was shot at least once after police returned fire. The suspect was then taken to Paoli Hospital, where he underwent surgery, but is expected to survive. We spoke with the suspect's neighbors who say no one saw this coming. This is a total, total unexpected event. I would wave to him just about every morning. We would talk about work. It's normally quiet here. It's normally a pretty nice neighborhood, but things happen, I guess. Not, not 
All right, back out live. As of this evening, the suspect's name has not been released. Also, no word on how many firearms the suspect had with him inside that vehicle. Reporting live from Montclair, Walter Perez, Channel 6 Action News. Rick? Walter, thank you for that report. All right, now the details. Concerned parents are taking matters into their own hands to make sure students at Temple University are safe. After a rise in gun violence, parents are now paying for their children's private security near the North Philadelphia campus. Action News reporter Walter Perez is live there with more on these drastic security measures that are being taken. Walter. That's right, Rick. Simply put, the motivation behind all this is fear. Fear for their children living in this part of North Philadelphia. Now, the parents involved admit this is not a perfect solution. The patrol officers are not armed and they're not fully trained police officers, but it gives them something they were lacking, namely peace of mind. Jennifer Hedberg was already fully aware of the skyrocketing homicide rate in Philadelphia, including the murder of Temple student Sam Collington last November. She then received a disturbing phone call from her son, who's a senior at Temple. A couple of weeks ago, he called me and said there was a robber right outside his house. And it was like 5 p.m. She then decided to hire a private security firm and started a Facebook group asking if other parents would like to chip in. The response, she says, was overwhelming. In fact, dozens of parents jumped on the bandwagon. So it started as an idea for a private patrol within a few square blocks of Hedberg's son's apartment has mushroomed into an account that covers 19th Street to 15th Street and Diamond Street to Master. Jasmine Jackson, owner of JNS Protection Services, says her company's role is to supplement the efforts of the Temple University Police Department by hopefully deterring crime and reporting any suspicious activity. We want to let them know we're there, we're there to work together to help do what everybody's supposed to do, help decrease the crime rate. Officials from Temple sent Action News a statement reading in part, the Temple University Police Department has been in touch with the JNS Protection Services patrol officers. We want to help and support their efforts in any way we can. Meanwhile, Jennifer Hedberg says, even if private security offers nothing more than an extra set of eyes on the community, the investment is worth it. It gives me peace of mind and my parents peace of mind because it's the only thing that I could actually do.